welcome to my oh, show. You made me so feel so important. <laughs> well, you are very oh, important. Gee, and don't you look beautiful? Oh, thank you very much. This, this is going to be a bit silly, kind of us it having a silly. talk because yeah. I've known you since we were well, since I was nine. <laughs> Not it's we. too long since I was nine, darling. <laughs> you, yeah, I, do, I do indeed remember you as a nine-year-old, and you were a gorgeous little boy, and now you're a gorgeous old boy. Oh, okay. thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. But I've got to say, the, um, the freak <clears throat> wasn't so kind to me last year when I was hosting oh. last year's Helpman oh, Awards, sorry, was she? Oh. What did she say to me? She said that... Uh, she said... <laughs> that you used to have talent, but you grew out of it. <laughs> Dreadful thing to well, say. Let's isn't have it? a look at that moment oh, last yes. year when I found myself in the prison cell <laughs> of Chloe's show, The Producers. <laughs> Get me out of here, somebody help me! Shut your cake, old Burke! We don't need your belly aching in here, you oh. lily-livered milksop. Oh, Maggie, my darling, thank God you're here. It's Miss Kirkpatrick to you, scum. <laughs> you might be la -de da out there, but in here, you're just Bert Newton's bitch. <laughs> Newton's bitch, the, uh, the mind boggles, oh, really, doesn't no. it, Maggie? At <laughs> all, no. I'm a much nicer person. I know that you're always a little reticent to talk about the freak, but um, because it's only four years of an extraordinary yeah, career... Four, four, was, four and a half years out of 45, you know. But it, it, you, it, I suppose you have to admit that it did really change your life and, and, and take you on many, many different adventures. Oh, it sure did. It sure did. It, um, it took me to the West End got me good tables in restaurants. <laughs> it got me bank managers saying yes a lot. It, uh, it got me bankruptcy, crack-ups, dry-ups, um, very uh, unwise choices in uh, my love life. And um, generally, I had a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a bit mad, though. <laughs> But you did actually go to the to the West End to play ah, the freak yes, in, in, a, in, in a musical version mm, of Prisoner. Mm, tell, tell us about yes. that. Well, it was a musical version that Mike Walsh and the late Helen Montague put on. It was, oh God, panto, really. <laughs> you know, I mean, how you, you couldn't take it seriously. And indeed, the audience, being so used to panto, did boo and hiss and all that. She's behind you stuff. <laughs> and I was booed and hissed every night at the Queen's Theatre on Shaftesbury Avenue. It was an amazing opening night, I remember. There's so many celebrities there. I believe that, uh, what, is, is he Lord Webber now? But young Andrew Lloyd Webber, that yes. boy who writes things about cats and stuff. <laughs> yes. I believe he was there, and when the standing ovation came at the end, he looked around and sort of wondered why they were on their feet at this extraordinary exhibition of nonsense that he'd seen, <laughs> and then reluctantly kind of got up there with them. That's some um, pretty famous one-eyed supporters, I suppose you could say, over the years, haven't oh, you? Oh, you're talking about my little friend Sammy, are Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Sammy Davis Jr. Yes, yes, I had the great good fortune. It was during the, um, the last year of Prisoner, actually, six, and word was filtering through to the powers that be at Channel 10 that he kept talking in his show at night, he was doing the Hilton circuit, about this woman playing this role in this television series. And we were all quite excited about that. And somehow it was wangled that he came out to Channel 10 to meet me and to see the set and meet everybody and all that sort of thing. Wow. And uh, we were like a pair of kids together. <laughs> you know how, how, how teenage girls grab each other and jump up and down and squeal? And uh, he was performing the next night at, at the Hilton and he invited a number of us to go and see the show. And I said, oh, I'll come on one condition. He said, oh, please, you have a condition to come and see me? <laughs> I said, yes, I do. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I will come and see you if you sing Funny Valentine. Wow. And he did. And he dedicated it to me that night. Wow. And I felt very, very special. <laughs> but the next year, I was in Vegas when he was performing with Bill Cosby 
and he sang happy birthday to me because it was my birthday. So that was really nice. At Caesar's Palace? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. And you say prisoner didn't do some great things for you. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like growing up a Newcastle well, girl? Well, I think um, for anybody growing up in uh, not only Newcastle, but I guess any smaller town or city um, in Australia in the 50s and 60s is probably best summed up by... Um, a song that Bob Hudson wrote and the great Margaret Roadnight recorded some years ago. And um, it's called Girls in Our Town. It's a wonderful song. Mm. I don't suppose you'd like to, to sing it for me now, would you? Come on, Maggie. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, nervous. it's Maggie Kirkpatrick. <laughs> Girls in our town, they just haven't a care. You see them on Saturday floating on air Painting their toenails, washing their hair Maybe tonight it'll happen Girls in our town, some leave school at 15 Work at the counter or behind the machine Spend all their money on making the scene Yet plan on going to England Girls in our town go to parties in pairs Sit round the barbecue, give themselves airs Then they go to the bathroom with a girlfriend who cares Girls in our town are so lonely Girls too good for the pill Ah, but if you keep asking They probably will Sometimes they like you Just for the thrill And explain it away in the morning Girls in our town Get no help from their men And no one will help them Be 16 again Things might get better Hard to say when they only had someone to talk to Girls in our town can be saucy and bold And at 17 no one is better to hold Then they start having kids Start getting old Girls in our town Girls in our town Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so Thank you, much. Sweetheart. It's beautiful. One of your international co-stars was, uh, was our very own Rod Taylor, who I suppose is like the, the Russell Crowe of his day. Ah, ah, Why don't you tell us all about the filming of Welcome to Wookwood? I'll tell you what, he's, he's, he's a bit of a, a Russell Crowe to my generation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, welcome to Whoop Whoop, what can I say about it? There was this particular night, and I, I can paint the picture for you, it, it really was a full moon that night. And there'd been quite a session around this table, and um, suddenly everybody had gone. And there's just Rod and me there. Oh, isn't this lovely? A couple of old dears sitting here. <laughs> Last of the VB. <laughs> And he turned to me and he took my hand and he said, you know, Mag, 20 years ago, I'd have probably said to you, do you want to come to my room? <laughs> I said, Rod, 20 years ago, you and I would have been through half the cast and crew by now, <laughs> not to mention each other. 